so I'm Emily. I'm going to talk about uh, web archiving, which I study. I'm doing my PhD right now. Um, so what is web archiving? Uh, it might be when you need to save parts of the web in your own day-to-day -day life. You take a screen cap, you make a PDF, you download the HTML, something like that. But I study a particular type of web archiving, which is the model used by the Internet Archive, uh, where web crawlers capture timestamped versions of web resources using a standardized format, the WORC, uh, which creates a record of the whole HTTP transaction. So this can then be used with the uh, Wayback software to replay, replay or recreate uh, a website in a browser, which looks roughly as it did at a certain point in time. Um, and beyond the Internet Archive, there are also many other collections by institutions like libraries and archives and universities who all use the same kind of model and open source software. Uh, and specifically, my dissertation looks at recent work in the Web Archives community um, to figure out ways and support making these collections available for use by researchers, um, people like historians, and they're trying to develop tools to uh, perform large-scale data analysis on these work files, um, which have been collected over many years. So what I'm trying to understand in my work is um, what kinds of questions come up in these analyses and what additional information or documentation uh, might be needed about the data and how it was collected, and for those researchers to kind of adequately judge their findings. Um, so yeah, that's kind of my work and web archiving in a nutshell. But when I was thinking of how to connect web archiving to this theme of beyond DIY and doing it with others, um, I <laughs> got inspiration from Twitter and these two tweets that I think tell kind of the story of some tensions happening. Uh, so this first tweet is from Jason Scott, who runs the volunteer-led archive team, and they focus on collecting material at risk, like they've done things like uh, archive GeoCities websites uh, after the platform was shut down, after it was acquired by Yahoo. Um, so you can see here he's kind of talking about the work of a fellow archivist, but he's really uh, also kind of using this example to distinguish these two types of archivists, the kind of rogue archivists who are, you know, working quickly and nimbly and just going out there and collecting stuff uh, compared to like slow moving institutions who are steeped in bureaucracy. And you can tell like <laughs> which he thinks does a better job. Um, and then in contrast, there's this kind of counterpoint from uh, digital archivist Ross Spencer, who's worked for other like national archives institutions. And he's kind of calling out Jason Scott um, and asking for more recognition of the work that is done within, by people in institutions working within budgets and constraints. Um, and I really like how he's kind of framing these options of you know go fast, go alone, or go far, go together. Because uh, I think that starts to describe some of the big tensions in web archiving. Um, so also, yeah, I should acknowledge that I'm kind of coming from the, the world of uh, libraries and archives and these more institutional settings. Um, and I know that they also have their flaws and Many are ultimately kind of like agents of the states. Uh, so like agencies of the state, like national libraries and national archives. Uh, so you may have reasons to take issue with them in that sense. Um, but I, what, what I hope to do in this very brief talk is kind of bridge these discussions of data and networks with these perspectives from institutions who think along like time scales of decades and centuries. Um, so yeah, I'll start by just sketching out some of these other big tensions that kind of happen within web archiving. Um, so there is this first kind of like institutional and individual tension. Um, but there's also, yeah, like web archiving is a large scale endeavor. The web itself is huge and, you know, it's constantly changing. So how do you capture it all? Or how do you select what to archive? Um, there are some approaches that require more labor uh, and others use more automation. So like a web crawler uh, tries to automate this work and they can capture more breadth. 
um, but they might not get the details of individual sites uh, as well. Then there's new tools like Rhizome's Web Recorder, which makes it easier for individuals to kind of manually capture content as they browse the web page by page. Um, so they're gonna get kind of higher fidelity, but they're not gonna be able to cover as much ground as a web crawler. And then you have kind of automated solutions that are more bespoke uh, or custom built for particular kinds of content or particular websites. Uh, but these take a lot of effort to develop and then they're hard to extend and they might need to, like, they need to be maintained as those websites also change over time. Um, and then the other challenge is kind of long-term thinking uh, because really downloading or capturing the data is only one step in many steps of archiving. So there's all these other, like in archives, there's these life cycle models to describe all the other work that happens um, for ongoing preservation, which is like maintaining storage repositories as well as describing, indexing, or cataloging what you have in a collection and managing access. So figuring out if it's gonna be uh, more publicly available or more restricted. Um, and there's principles like locks or lots of copies keep stuff safe. Uh, but then you run into questions like, you know, who do you trust to have these resources over the long term? Um, and that may be questions of like financial sustainability as well as kind of questions around power and how controlling the data can also mean like controlling the people represented in that data. Um, and then there's also another question around like, for what purpose are you doing this archiving? Um, so in traditional archives institutions, there are these two key reasons, which is like preserving material as evidence in a kind of legal sense, uh, as well as preserving for kind of memory and cultural heritage. Um, so these concepts are, have come up in debates in archival studies, uh, mainly around questions of like how much an archivist can or should select, like actively select what material goes into the archive uh, and how much an archivist should or shouldn't shape or mediate the record that's left for the future. Um, so yeah, that, that's like a big question of, you know, what kind of role the archivist has and to whom she's responsible. And part of this res responsibility is who can or who should determine uh, what's included or excluded. Um, so for web archives, a lot of the decisions for inclusion and exclusion also involve like code and algorithms um, because yeah, especially in institutional web archives, there's this imbalance of resources to do the archiving uh, compared to the overall scale of the web. Uh, so that means web, web archivists have to develop new ways to use existing elements or structures of the web to select content and make these decisions at scale. Um, so there are a few ways that they've been doing this, uh, like web crawlers, kind of work with the topology of the web and links and URIs and like domain names and they kind of select and filter based on that. So like you can have like regex scoping rules based on the structure of a URI to exclude things with a certain like, with, the, with a path that is of a certain format. Um, and the selection procedure also kind of includes it might follow like an opt-in model or an opt-out model to gain permission for archiving, um, which again, depending on the scale of the collection, uh, it can be difficult to get individual permissions, so they can use like uh, kind of technological proxies um, to infer permission, and one of them is like robots.txt, which allows a website owner or admin to specify that certain parts of their website aren't supposed to be uh, indexed using a bot. So like mostly that's search engine indexing, but you could also specify archives or archiving crawlers. Um, and then more like actively, you could resist archiving by blocking specific IP ranges to your site. Um, so yeah, but these elements are used kind of because Archivists have to work within the existing infrastructure uh, that was never really built to consider archiving. Um, so my question for you, 
kind of networks folks is like, what if it was, or how could infrastructure or protocols be designed to address more complicated understandings of like authorship and membership in an online community that we have today versus like what was available maybe 25 years ago. Um, and yeah, how can we preserve valuable evidence and memories of cult online culture for future generations? Um, and I also think that this question of like network infrastructures is not just protocols, uh, but the people involved in communities who are working together. And yeah, it would be great to have more discussions within communities of like who are working with the web or with other network materials, like you know, what evidence or what memory of your activities do you want to leave for the future? Um, and yeah, so I'll just close quickly with this one final point. Like, I think the idea of having scalable mechanisms is important, but uh, framing the question of like having a right to archive or having a right to opt out also depends on what you think the purpose of archives is. Uh, so yeah, like what you're archiving, why and for whom. Um, so I don't think that is actually a question of like strict binaries or rules that you have to follow, but considering like an ethics of care and empathy towards the different people involved uh, with this material and their different relationships to, uh, yeah, to that material over time. Um, yeah, and I think some of this work has already kind of started with community-centered web archiving projects like DocNow, uh, as well as the folks with Edgy. Um, but I'm, I'm wondering if like community archiving is the only way forward or if there are other ways to support archivists in bigger institutions. Uh, yeah, so I think that's it. And then there are some resources and I'll make these available too.